Hi, I'm Vivek, I'm with Asmin. A couple of weeks back, we hosted a webinar on small cell testing. We've had a lot of customers come back to us and ask us about small cell testing, especially in the context of channel emulation. People tell you, the channel emulation experts tell us, you know, what does small cell testing mean from a channel emulation standpoint? And that's really what I'm going to talk about today. There are four things to keep in mind. I've listed those here. We'll walk through each of these things in detail. The first thing to keep in mind is the insertion delay. What does insertion delay mean? Insertion delay is essentially the additional delay introduced by the equipment you have. So what you see here is a small cell, a small cell or a macro cell, it really doesn't matter. Then the channel emulator you use and the device that's attached to it. The insertion delay is essentially the additional delay introduced by this piece of equipment. Why is that important? Let's look at an example. I have two pieces of equipment, one with one microsecond insertion delay and another with four microseconds insertion delay. So you may tell, okay, it's just three microseconds, why is that relevant? The reason that's important is because this difference of three microseconds essentially translates to a physical separation, a physical distance of 900 meters. Think about it. Just by using a piece of equipment with a four microsecond delay, you've essentially moved the device out by 900 meters, which makes a huge difference for small cell environment. The second thing to keep in mind is the output power. Many of the small cell scenarios deal with higher output powers than your traditional macro cell edge of the cell scenarios. So the equipment you use should be capable of handling the high output powers. The third thing to keep in mind is the dynamic range. Let's look at an example here. The first piece of the first instance is where you have a piece of equipment with a narrow dynamic range. What happens here is any signal that goes outside this dynamic range is going to start clipping or causing overdrives. Then you have another piece of equipment with a wider dynamic range, which basically means that even if you have large swings in power, it's able to handle these swings in power without any flipping or overdriving. Why is this important for small cells? This is important for small cells because of the scenarios you deal with. Let's take an example. I start off from my office, so I'm connected to a macro cell, then I drive from a macro cell environment into an indoor environment. And all of a sudden, the device goes from an outdoor to an indoor environment. I could go through two sets of walls, and all of a sudden, the path loss, my device experiences has gone up. So how does the device respond? The device increases the power it transmits at. So the piece of the equipment you have should be capable of handling these large swings of power because the UV is going to change the power at which it transmits drastically. The last thing to keep in mind is the complexity of scenarios. When you look at small cells, you're dealing with complex scenarios. Now, you can start with something very, very simple when you have a device attached to a small cell and you can do a bunch of tests, but that's not where you would see the majority of the issues. Majority of the issues come in because of mobility or when you look at small cell, macro cell interaction. So let's take an example. I have a user who starts with a macro cell. The macro cell uses carrier aggregation. I have neighboring cells. And then the user goes in his car, goes to his house, and then he goes indoors. How are you going to create this environment? Whatever equipment you use or the solution you use should be capable of handling these kind of scenarios. It's not enough if the equipment can just handle these scenarios. It should, be, it should make it easy for you to configure these scenarios and test these scenarios out. So to summarize, what's important for small cell testing from a channel emulation standpoint? The first thing to keep in mind is the low insertion delay. Remember from our math that just going from a one microsecond solution to a four microsecond solution, you're introducing an artificial delay equivalent into 900 meters. The second thing is high output powers. The solution you have in mind should be capable of handling the high output power scenarios that may come about with small cells. Third thing to keep in mind is the wide dynamic range as you emulate different mobility scenarios, as you emulate different scenarios related to how the user goes from an indoor to an outdoor environment or macro cell to a small cell environment, the solution should be capable of handling the large swings in power that go with it. Last but not the least, the solution should make it easy for you not only to create these scenarios but also to test these scenarios sort of comprehensively. Thank you.